is responsible for your business IT? Well, for us, it was Jesse Blake. And Jesse, <laughs> how much background do you have in business IT? Oh my God, zero. Zero, that's right. <laughs> now, as your business grows, and ours has, its complexity grows. And Jesse... Well, he's great, but that seemed to be a lot. It's a task that more than one person should handle. Yeah, that's right. So that's why MCAL uh, is the place to be. Uh, MCAL.ca slash SDPN. We want you to try this out. They've structured uh, their business around maximizing customer satisfaction. It's a you know 100% Canadian team, by the way, based in the Toronto area. Vendor neutral, so they don't push or upsell. You need a team of specialists to cover all the bases when things go wrong. Your Mac and Windows people you that's, know they could do either or that's right with mcal you have this team at a fraction of the cost of an in-house it person so we can pay jesse much less now ah damn it it's great anyway hey listen they don't pay me uh yeah you have more important <laughs> things to do than worry about your it and mcal will take care of it in many cases they can start same day one month free trial basis enter the promo code dangle to receive an extra month free we're giving you an extra month uh, mcal, E-M-K-A-L dot C-A slash S-D-P-N. They're a Canadian company. Let's start the show. S-D-P-P. The Steve Dangle Podcast. With your hosts, Steve Dangle, Adam Wilde, and Jesse Blake. Let's go! Isn't it our job to educate people? <laughs> educate people on hockey, Jesse? You know what? Steve, isn't that our job? Everyone, you know... Loved our rant about Radko Gudis. But where were they? Where were they, I ask, when we were talking about how the Leafs' fourth line should be comprised? That's right. <laughs> That's more interesting than talking about something interesting. What Steve and Adam are talking about is JJ Reddick, who was on first take this morning. He said, I can do a video on my podcast where I break down the last nine games the Pelicans have used Zion Williamson as the primary ball handler. 54K views on YouTube, which is pretty respectable. But I yeah. want to call out a coach yesterday. Oh, that'll get tens of millions of engagements. That's right. That's the ecosystem we live in. Are you Do fans actually want to be educated or not? Dude, that is a fundamental misunderstanding of what your job is. Yeah. And I feel like, like Jesse, can you look up what J.J. Redick made as a player? Millions of dollars. He doesn't need this. He was a good no, player. No, no, not at all. Yeah. I also want to throw out there. I want to throw out there. Um, if, if you're one of the people that bemoans the state of the world, you're correct. Yeah, like you're sure. totally correct. Sure. And but these them's the rules. And uh, yeah, I think more people are interested in why you're calling out Doc Rivers for going three and seven since taking over as Bucks head coach and complaining about it. I thought he had actually had a good point. I was like, yeah, Doc, like you took the job. Yeah. Now he's doing the same thing Doc's doing. Doc's complaining about the job. So is JJ. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, like you you're talking about a video that did very respectively. That's super yeah. niche. 50,000 views yeah. on yeah. Zion? Just nine games of Zion as being a, a ball, ball handler? handler. Like, like that's who such cares? a niche topic, but you hit 50,000. You should be very proud. Yeah, no, but then the Doc Rivers thing. Yeah, because you can be any kind of... You can be a hardcore basketball fan. You should. Yep. You could be an intermediate basketball fan. You could be a very casual basketball fan. Dude, all this, all these like TikTok videos about the drama to do with basketball has made me a bigger basketball fan. I don't, I don't understand how he doesn't understand that calling out an NBA coach as an ex player has a broader appeal than breaking down game film. He's mad he got like, pushback. <laughs> yeah, He's, I don't think there's no way JJ Reddick's that stupid. No, like, I yeah no. Well, I there's think, no a, way. A lot think, of it, I think, is that's a good thing to say on TV because now people will talk about that. This is why. <laughs> So this is why hypocrite. you have to think about this, though. This is why he uh, uh, like this is somebody who clearly spent the night on Twitter reading the replies. Yeah. Yep. Which yep. you have to not as do. someone who has done that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's such a take, good point. He, I'm making an effort to no longer do that. That's absolutely he was he, he was on his phone in bed all night and he woke up the next morning, went on first take and was like, the Internet, da, 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 I'm mad at you. And you can't do that. Kids these days. Yeah. <laughs> they're not as good as kids those days. I have to say, you know what I mean? You look at like you got to think about this too. JJ Reddick's in his multi-million dollar house or penthouse condo or whatever he lives in. 
Wilson. He's probably got a 60 or a 70 inch television. Hmm. He's got a gigantic couch. He's probably got a beautiful family. He's a good looking guy. Right? Good shape. He gets to wake up and be on first take. Yeah, what else? Oh, yeah, who? <laughs> what, what and, he's, and he's pissed about... Probably got a really nice bagel machine. He's probably got a nice car, too. Yeah. You, and maybe he an He's got a toaster. Yeah, for the pores. Rich people have bagel machines. That's right. Well, what I want to say is that that if, if he had put his phone down and looked around him, mm -hmm. which I've had to do on multiple occasions, <laughs> and you go, life's pretty good. I don't need to worry about these people. Come on, don't worry about it. Yeah. You had your opinion. You might have been a little wrong. You might have been a little right. People might disagree with you. That's okay. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point of the debate format. Mm -hmm. I went to salaryswish.com, which is right. a cap-friendly spinoff. They, yes, they actually have a basketball version of cap-friendly. If you are a basketball fan and you are not aware, it's called Salary Swish. The so cap-friendly owns. Like, this they, is they, it is, it is yeah. theirs. They made a basketball version of their hockey website, cap-friendly. And on, on Salary Swish, I almost said on cap-friendly, on Salary Swish, they have JJ Redick, who uh, signed six contracts mm -hmm. during the course of his career. Mm -hmm. They are uh, they have a total value of $118 million. <laughs> Over Dude. his, uh, so he's got a nice bagel machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd it you... drafted in 2006, 11th overall, play, uh, 39 years old. Currently played up until 2010, 118 million dollars. 2010? No, that's one contract because he he no. played against the Raptors. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. In the 76. Yeah, when was sorry? 2021. The, the only one that counts. When so 2021. He, the one where the he got into the TV the rights years though. He if you if you got into the TV rights years. Yeah. When the NBA salaries went through the roof, then you're fine. Yeah, like his Bench last player his 13. last contract was uh, two years, thirteen million dollars. Like, and oh he's my God. no one at that point in 2021. Wow, dude! If so, this is a hockey primary podcast, and people are like, "Who the hell is JJ Redick?" Oh, he was a he, good player. Mm -hmm. He he would be the highest in his last washed year. He would be the highest paid player in the NHL right now. Oh my God! And yep. next year he'd be second. Yep. Bum. Now. Today is the day before an anniversary. Oh, no. <laughs> yes, it is. It's February 21st, 2024. What happened four years ago tomorrow, Steve Dangle? Uh, the Leafs. Mm -hmm. Hot off a 4 nothing win over the Pittsburgh Penguins. Mm -hmm. Um Lost to a 42-year-old Zamboni driver who now works for them. Yes. Still works for them. <laughs> Does he still work for them? I don't know. I don't know. Because uh, he was coaching, I want to say, in the SPHL. Right. How is this the second straight show that league has been mentioned? That's You know what? Uh, I, I was surprised it was mentioned last time, too. Well, here we are. Uh, now, because of David Ayers mm -hmm. and that game, there was somebody who wanted to uh, send you this. And they sent me this in October. <sighs> And I've had it in my office. You guys ready for this? I've had this in my office what is it? for five months. And I put a note in my calendar. I'm like, this is when I read the note. Hey, Adam, see and closed for a card you can poke fun at Steve with. Really do appreciate you guys. This is from Colin Hannigan. Colin got this from Hooligan Sports Collectibles uh, in Barrie, Ontario. And it is a David Ayers Young Guns oh, rookie card. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> a Young Guns rookie card. What? And so Colin was just dying for you to have this. And now you have it. Oh, my God. Thank you. Great. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Wonderful. That is still... You know how we always talk about um, the development of players being screwed up by COVID? Yep. You know what else was screwed up by COVID? My YouTube channel. Was it? Because this that game was like two, three weeks before the shutdown. Mm -hmm. It's the biggest video I've ever had, mm -hmm. and all that momentum's gone. Wow. All of it was gone. Dude, that guy was on talk shows mm -hmm. in Canada. He was on talk shows in the States. I want to say he did one in Britain. Um, he was getting beer fridges sent to him. He was getting all sorts of stuff sent to him. Like, you could ride that. Like, how many... How many people get their, their 15 minutes and in, in convert it into like five years, right? He could have rode that forever and COVID. world shuts down. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'm not ungrateful for COVID. 
Uh, uh, I <laughs> am. No, I'm completely I'm ungrateful for that. I am completely ungrateful for COVID. I yeah. think it sucked. And you know what? You know what the worst part is? Is I think that that COVID year saved the Toronto Maple Leafs from being blown apart. How did because it? they were so unimpressive. That game mm-hmm. was the reason that Zach Bogosian didn't get signed that season. Undefeated. Right? Um, yeah, it's crazy. How about that record? Um, and I feel like the Toronto Maple Leafs, there would have been some massive changes had COVID not stepped in and been like, yeah, you see this shit team? Because they were playing like shit. Let's they be were playing like shit. Um, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna do something about that. You know, Nick Robertson, who you have to beg and plead with them to uh, get them to give them any sort of minutes that matter. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, hey, what if the 18-year-old him... He played that played year. ...played playoff games for us. Yeah. And got injured, I think. Um, no, he didn't get injured during the playoff series. Mm-hmm. He did score their final five-on-five goal. Oh, wow. ...of the series. He scored the 3 nothing goal in Game 3 that the Leafs blew and lost. Mm-hmm. Then they scored all their goals um, either on the power play or with the net empty in game four mm-hmm. in that huge comeback. And then they got shut out in game five. Um, cool. That's a that's a really cool hockey guard. Yeah, I'm glad really that they cool. made that. Thank you, Colin Halligan, that's for that. That's sick. Uh, yeah, shout very, out Colin. Yeah, no, it's, we've been working on that for months. Thanks, you jerk. Um, <laughs> in the LA Times today, by the way, the Leafs are, are playing the uh, Arizona Coyotes oh, tonight. Oh, one thing. Oh, yeah. Because sure. you mentioned calendar important stuff. Yes. Uh, I had a note in my calendar today, too. Oh. Today is the day we have to change the air filter in the basement. Ah, <laughs> that's is, great. Uh, I forget it's four or six months. I put in the calendar from whatever date, but it's the date from last time. You changed it when you messed up the size of the air filter. So yes. we, after the show, we're going to do that and we'll film it. The building has two... Uh, different ducts for some reason and they're different sizes and I didn't know that. So did I say, hey, maybe I have the wrong size air duct or filter? filter yeah. uh, no, I just crammed it in with dad rage. <laughs> you, <laughs> it was way too big for the slot and you just crumpled half of it together and threw it in the, fil- in the filter slot. So it worked, and we still have air, don't we? So today don't we'll, be an ingrate. Today's we'll, filter day. We're gonna put that on our Instagram story of Steve changing the air. I can't wait. Filter. I can't wait. Let's see if he can do great. it right this time. Um, Continue, Adam. There is a great article. Rick, Rick West had actually tweeted about it. It's in the Los Angeles Times this morning, uh, and it's about Austin Matthews and the NHL's drive to recruit new fans in Latino communities. Mm-hmm. And one in five, here's what it says. One in five people in the U.S. is Hispanic and 94% of Hispanic males identify as sports fans. Uh, the percentage who follow the NHL was just 6.8% wow. in 2020. Call it a growth opportunity since 40% of NHL teams play in the eight U.S. states with the highest Latino populations. Seven NHL teams now offer Spanish language broadcasts and bilingual hockey-themed classroom projects. Uh, Mexico City may be the site for uh, an NHL game as soon as next fall. And what's amazing is that the Los Angeles Times published an article in Austin Matthews is the main picture on it. And I mean, wow. and, and so, you know, while um, while obviously there are other players in the league that bring other strengths and grow the game in other ways, Austin Matthews brings something that is completely unique to hockey. And I think sometimes in Toronto, we forget that uh, because, you know, it's not like it's not like the Leafs wouldn't take growth. But it's grown. <laughs> right. Like you would call this a mature hockey market, right? Not a growth opportunity. Yeah. Sometimes, well, like we discussed uh, on yesterday's show, maybe a complacent hockey market at times. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a complacent PR team sometimes. Well, well. Ah. Toronto would benefit greatly from a second team. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I'm, I'm with I'm all the way on. And they that. got one. Uh, and so anyway, Austin going into uh, potentially scores 50th goal in 55 games against the Arizona Coyotes tonight is special. However, let me just run these stats by you mm-hmm. in the last five games. How are the Leafs against the Coyotes? Uh, I feel pretty good. Mm. I think undefeated. One and four. <laughs> one. What? <laughs> are you fucking serious? Yeah. What Damn. happened? <laughs> they haven't played. I, I usually don't whiff that bad. You're usually like 10 out of 10 niche leaf trivia. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That's weird. Yeah. Um, you didn't get enough sleep. I guess not. Yeah. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. We like this. Okay. What's the next one? Okay. So the next one is the Toronto Maple Leafs last game against the Coyotes was when? <laughs> um. 
They haven't played yet this season. So it'd be last year. What the fuck? Why am I drawing a complete blank? Um, I know they've played at Mullet Arena. Wasn't it like last February? Like, wasn't it like almost a year ago? It was ago? December 29th, 2022. Mm-hmm. What the that makes fuck? sense. Yeah, they, they played them last season. They played them twice in the fall last year. Yeah, so they because they went an entire calendar year without playing them though, which is not. Yeah, but that that happens quite yeah. often because you only played the Western Conference teams twice. So they know. played. Yeah, Jesse's right. October seventeenth, yeah. December 29th. ninth. I'm trying to remember highlights, and all that's coming to me is that weird uh, overtime winner. I think Kapanen got against him because wasn't wasn't last year the. Arizona in December, and then th- wasn't Vegas also on like New Year's Eve or something like that? And it was a pretty cool game. I don't remember that. You're asking me to remember Dude, stuff. What's happening? Yeah. Uh, the Leafs have in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven meetings in the Austin Matthews era. How many wins do they have against the Coyotes? It feels like they usually do well when they go there. Four. Four wins. Wow. In the last 19 years, the Leafs record versus the Coyotes between February 21st, 20, 2004 and February 1st, 2024 is 6, 15, and 3. See, that I believe. That I believe. This is not a place that the Leafs like to play. Dude, the early LFR Leafs in Arizona were unwatchable. They were, oh, dude. It was terrible. terrible. Arizona is also a decent team for like a, oh, they were. a middle stretch of their franchise history. Yeah. yeah. Like twenty yeah. didn't twenty eleven they went to the, the Western Conference 2012. Finals twenty twelve twenty twelve like the they Leafs were, good were ass yeah yes. all all the way through ass right. all the way through the Gretzky years um, but I think <laughs> yeah the Gre- well the Gretzky coaching years <laughs> oh, okay yeah. followed by the Tockett coaching years mm-hmm. um, I I I think that what's special about tonight obviously Austin and the team have had a day in Arizona to pl- to hang around and I think that's good for him to be able to see family and whatever sure but it is very special to be able to go home. And potentially get your 50th uh, in a record amount of games. No Toronto Maple Leaf has ever done this before. And I, I have to say, the Morgan Riley thing, the situation, the, the suspension, the appeal, the uh, upholding of the appeal, seems to have, and the Leafs have been out front with this, it was Nylander who said it, seems to have galvanized them in a way that a team that can be accused of not having a heartbeat on several occasions, and I think rightfully so by mm-hmm. the fans, they finally got fired up about something. These types of games, though, are the games that the Leafs sometimes tend not to get fired up for. You, this is the kiss of death. Right? Do you this, know when the last time the Arizona Coyotes won a game in regulation? No. Oh, no. Yeah, they've had a bit of a slip recently. I don't know. January 22nd. You're Ooh. kidding. Ooh. <laughs> a month? Oh, no. <laughs> January 22nd is the last game. They beat the Penguins on a Monday. It's the last time they won a game in regulation. And now the oh, Leafs go in boy. there on a four-game winning streak? The Well, four-game winning streak, but also, like, we always look at the second half of a back-to-back, like the game where the team's going to play like crap. Like, what if they save it? You know what I mean? You can't tell me that doesn't happen, where a player's like, eh, I'm not going to go. They're not on back. a second half of back-to-back. No, no, no. I'm saying they're going to be on the first half of a back-to-back oh. for Arizona, mm-hmm. right? Right. And so, okay, let's, you know, we got friggin' Vegas tomorrow. So we can't go like a hundred percent, dude. If if you're thinking like that, I don't want you on my hockey team. Yeah, but we just <laughs> talked about that yesterday. How like that happens? Like, yeah, team. Oh, there's wow. 82 games. That's so many games. Nah, if Rick Tockett's my coach, that's not happening. No, <laughs> oh, Canucks would never. You stand Rick Tockett? Can- Canucks would. Never. Canucks would never. They show up. Yeah. Well, they are on their first, the first three-game three losing streak of yeah. the. Uh, but they're competitive. Yes, that's true. Even in their losses, um, I, I hope the Leafs aren't thinking like that because this is a trap game. Like the definition, this is it right this now. Is this is Tavares back to the Islanders. You go there. You're against a team that hasn't won a game in regulation in a month. They're they're oh nine and one in their last ten. Uh, I think their lo- losing streak is three, four, five straight wow. games in regulation losses. Like and then you go in there, you're on the win streak. You gotta come up for this game. Like you gotta show up, and you can't have that mentality at all. If you lose tomorrow against Vegas, I'll forgive you. <laughs> if you get this one, that's the thing. You know, yeah. this has got to be the game. Here are the names of the players that are from Ontario on the, the team on the Coyotes currently. Oh wait, no, that's last year. Idiots! Why doesn't this ha- stupid dumb? What idiot. happened with Hockey DB? Why don't you have this year? 
That's so it weird. It doesn't? Look up Dumba. Huh? Just click on Dumba's name. Yeah, why? Well, because he's on the team. Yeah, well, he's. I can't click on that because it's last year's roster. You can just go to this year's roster. <laughs> I'm trying Dad! to do that. I'm trying to do that. <laughs> and I was trying Dad! to do it through Hockey TV because you, you can to, sort. Do you want me to do this? Well, I wanted to sort by, by province and it wouldn't let me do that. So now I'm upset. Do you want me you to pull, read with your eyes? Do you want eyes? me to just read it, up, read All right. it off? Oh, yeah, you go ahead. Okay. <laughs> Michael Carcone. Uh, Ontario, we got. You just want Ontario Borns? Yeah, just just name the Ontario Borns. Uh, we got Josh Brown, Sean Dursey. No, this Lawson is last Krause. year's roster. Oh no, no, no that's 23. What are you talking about? Oh my god, I'm it's gonna l- beat the both. <laughs> literally, <laughs> what did right. I do? He's what right. did I do? But bring up the right roster. He's right. Yeah, no, you he's know right. what? Jesse's right. Thank also, you. you're pretty tall. Thank Adam, you. You're going down though. <laughs> <laughs> Travis Dermott, Lawson Kraus, uh, Jack McBain. That's it. Okay, none of those well, players are allowed to score tonight. None of them. Oh, shut if up. I'm if I'm Sheldon Keith, I say to you, I don't care what I need to do, but we cannot have former Ontario guys because they're no longer in Ontario. We can't have Travis Dermott coming in and laying a hat trick on us. No, you're no totally- Ontario guys scores score tonight and I'll take you all out to dinner. You got to shut out basically the whole roster. Shut them out. It's it's Ontario guys and former Leafs. Yeah. Travis Boyd. Alex Kerfoot. Oh, shit. Yeah. How did I go to Travis Man, Boyd he's first? He's been a hat trick tonight. Dude, you know he's it. been ice cold, too. Well, he had like one oh, hot no streak. way. Ker- uh, Kerfoot's been ice cold. That's he had a crazy. hot streak. Wow. And everyone's like, oh, no. Yeah, right after we called him out the first time. Oh, he was the and people are like, see, he's, be- he's becoming the Kerfoot we all knew he'd be. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was okay. the straw that stirs the drink. It's- Kerfoot's got eight goals in 55 games. Which is good depth scoring by Leaf standards. He makes more than, well... There is Tyler Bertuzzi, I guess. <laughs> but he makes more than every other underachieving leaf in the goal department. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we held him. We we had to we had to we had to protect him. You know what? Couldn't go to Seattle. Everyone needs to get over their hatred of Kerfoot because I don't hate Kerfoot. Dude, on his way out, he scored a playoff overtime winner. All yeah. is forgiven. Yeah, there you go. All is um, forgiven. So that that's what needs to happen tonight. It needs to be Matthew scoring. Mm-hmm. I would appro- I would appreciate a hat trick, but one goal will be fine. <laughs> sure. No Ontario guys, no former Leafs. Mm-hmm. And if they try to step up to you, Ryan Reeves, Max Domi, you know what to do. They're an uh, underratedly is, tough team. Like, Max should probably score a goal tonight because this is his former team. That would be nice. Well, wow. team- Max has got eight of them. <laughs> he should, he should probably have nine after tonight, don't you think? No, I mean, I mean former teams. Oh, eight former teams. Yeah, yeah he like oh. he's got a lot of former teams. Yeah, by he needs to be scoring rules, a lot more. So, by Leaf rules, he should score basically every game. Yeah, <laughs> if, if that's the rule, <laughs> you got to score against your former team. Yeah. Max Domi would have a lot more goals. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, so it's it's. Uh, I don't know. I'm I'm really excited for tonight's game, and I'm excited for t- tomorrow night's game against the Golden Knights. It's always pretty special when you get to play the you know the Stanley Cup winners, mm-hmm. uh, and the Leafs don't get to play the Knights very much. It's special when Austin goes to Arizona. It's special when you get to go to Vegas anyway. But they did just win the Cup. This is going to be great. And I know they're late night games, and I know they say ten o'clock start, and I know that you know and I know that that means about ten fifteen twenty ten twenty. Mm-hmm. Well, sucks. Also, y- you guys are burying the lead. What's the lead? If the Leafs don't beat the Coyotes, they don't get to go to the Sphere. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> they don't get to go. Yo, can I just say? See the Wiggles. That I don't know how many of you made it to that rant at the end of the show yesterday, but uh, I'll, I was surprised at how many Nashville fans reached out and were like, thank you. Was that a well, thing? Uh-huh. Like Preds fans are like, this team is bad. It's, you, it's, it's great that they've been performing. They won again last night. They beat gold, the Golden Knights last night. You stopped me right in my tracks twice during that rant. Most, like, most fan bases are like that. They're not. But there was there was also people on the other side that were like, the team is overachieving. If they were correct, they were like, okay, if you're right about that assessment of the team, then the team is overachieving. So why are you so upset at them? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point too. Yeah, <laughs> that's a really so good. Oh, there's point. there's. I think there's a lot of ways to take what happened. Well, yeah, what I, I think I think the way to take it is from a stone. Management squeezed harder. Management made a mistake, and uh, they'll never admit to it. So there you go. <laughs> Do you have a general opinion about good deeds? Yeah, they're good. Hmm. What I if think that's the correct opinion? What if you won a cup for doing them? Whoa. And That'd donated be the my- first cup we've seen around here for a while. Hey. 
What if it also got $100,000 for a registered Canadian charity of your team's choice? And it got you the title of Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup champion. Well, gosh, that'd be such a good deed. Wouldn't it? Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup is back for its eighth season. You can record eligible Good Deeds and post it to TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, or X using hashtag Good Deeds Cup and hashtag contest. And remember to tag at Chevrolet Canada and hashtag your team's name. Every eligible Good Deed you, your family, and your community submits on your behalf, uh, on, on your team's behalf as well. On social, we'll add one point to your team's collective Good Deeds Cup leaderboard. Good job, Adam. Thank you. That's me encouraging you. Does oh, that count deed. as a good deed? It's a good deed. Steve, just do a good Whoa, deed. I think oh! I did. Hey! Chevrolet continues to see hockey as a great Canadian sport and inspires wow. youth, that inspires youth to get involved in the game, regardless of gender, race, or ability. And uh, they want to give back to minor hockey leagues and their hometowns. $100,000 for a registered Canadian charity of your choice and the title of Chevrolet Good Deeds Cup champion. Visit ChevroletGoodDeedsCup.ca to learn more. Now, um, I do want to say that last night, this is a really interesting note for the Golden Knights. Um, uh, Mark Stone went down. And we're not sure how long. Oh. And I have not an, uh, seen an update this morning. You think he'll be back for the playoffs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's perfect timing, actually, because if they want to make a trade, now's the time. Mm. And then Mark Stone will be back. Oh, game one. Oh, Mark Stone! It's Holy shit! How did he do that? Dude, he's so incredibly good and underrated in every way. Like, just one of the best 200-foot players in the league. Do you? Is there anything, like, other than a goal, is, is there anything hotter than Mark Stone take away in the neutral zone? That, yeah, forget scoring and his ridiculous goal celebrations where he just turns into animal from the Muppets. Or, or, or where he kills ECHL players in the preseason. Oh, yeah, I forgot <laughs> about that. that. Too. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, man, who he does have a that? He does have an angry streak. Shit, he certainly does. Um... There's sometimes when he steals the puck, it's it's just that it's you ever see the Undertaker come up from under the ring and drag you into the hole? Yeah. Yeah, that's Mark Stone. Mm -hmm. He drags you down back into hell. Just just when you think you're out of it, ah you see them slip back underneath the canvas. Are you I thought you were gonna talk about a different injury when you brought up the uh, Golden Knights. Which one? Because uh, they moved Jack Eichel to L T I R and the internet oh. mob got really upset at them. Why? Because uh, the because they're making trade. They're a doing little cap bit of shenanigans. Cap circumvention. It's not cap circumvention at all. It's like, it's within the rules, so it's not circumvention. But you move them to LTIR right before the deadline. I think they freed up now like eight extra million dollars in cap space ahead of the deadline. He comes back for the playoffs, and you, you, everybody who doesn't like the Golden Knights is that mad because they're doing what they do every year. You know what? What's <laughs> hilarious about this uh, is that the guy that used to do this was Lou Lamorella. He doesn't flaunt the rules the way he used to. It isn't like kind of, you know, shuck and jive with the rules the way he used to. But um, the Golden Knights are doing exactly what prime Lou Lamorello always did. And by the way, you know who else does it? Tampa Bay. Did you say the Blue Jackets? Sorry, not Blue Jackets. Prime uh, <laughs> Prime Lou does yeah. I don't know why I said Blue Jackets. I don't know. I don't know. The Lou no. Jackets. The Lou Jackets. And, and, and Tampa always does this. Mm -hmm. and, and Montreal was super mad. They had like a $100 million payroll. Did they win the cup? Does anyone care? No. I've never seen anyone object to their team doing it. No. So, and Bill Foley has been on the record and saying if there was no salary cap, we'd spend $150 million on player right. salaries. Mm -hmm. So, and I think Bill Foley's going to be like, win me a cup. I don't care. If Jack Eichel could play tomorrow, he would be in the lineup. But he can't. I, yeah. Well, he, I mean, so you put also, him on LTIR, you go get your cap space and do your thing. Why are any of us having a hard time believing Jack Eichel got hurt? Yeah, but, that's well, also continue, weird. Like, he didn't, like, get hurt. Like, his injury right. was, is, there's not enough there. He's not healthy enough to come back. So right. they moved him. Yeah. Mark Stone as well. Mark like, Stone, yeah. And they, there's no, like, reason. He, there's no, it's undisclosed why he left, like, the upper body injury. So I'd be interested to see what that is. But, like, they're banged up. I They've know. always been banged up. We've this never raised are. an eyebrow when the Penguins do this, though. Because we're just like, yeah, Penguins always get hurt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what if the Vegas Golden Knights are just a team that always gets hurt and also they're a contender? Yeah, and also very good at what they do. Extremely good. Yeah. Yeah. Remember when they kept basically an entire Stanley Cup team and now they're going to add to it? Yeah. Lol. <laughs> Bill uh, Foley mullet, does not care. No nope. Mullet and then T-Mobile. It's going to be fun two days. Mm -hmm. um, did anyone check if Mullet is actually in EA Sports NHL 24? Can someone please check that? No. I want to know. It is. It is. It this is? Year? Yeah, yeah. It is. So like the reduced seating and everything? Yes. Yes. Mullet Arena is in this year's game. Then it's enshrined in history forever. 
which is great. Well, it also exists in real life. Yes, I know. But they <laughs> pretended the more... it didn't last year. <laughs> that's the that's the worst part. Yeah, I know. I know. Dude, um, <laughs> dude I was uh, I was at a buddy's house the other day and he had the game on in his garage. Garage beers. Very important. And we were watching the Carolina versus Arizona game. And Aaron Air. It, oh, Aaron Care. Mm, you stopped me in my track. Mm. Um, on one end of the arena, the the company they were advertising mm -hmm. on the glass was like Kia, which is like a company, big company. And then they go to the other end, and it's like Mavs Tire Depot. <laughs> and I was like, oh. I don't, I don't think this game is a big draw. <laughs> like, hey, there's nothing wrong with local ads. We like local ads. Oh, yeah. we do like local ads. I'm just not used to seeing it. Right. On an NHL board. Yeah, because I usually watch the Leafs. Well, and you're also watching digital boards most of the time now. Too, yes. Which super, I, no, by it the way, was a digital board. I've always wondered about that. Mm -hmm. So you... It was on the Bally broadcast. You spend X amount of dollars to be on the boards at, at the NHL game. Mm -hmm. And you do that for... Yeah, and, and you go along with the prices and it costs a fortune, but you know that you're going to be on national television every time that puck goes by, well, right? Not anymore. Or, or regional television. Now that the digital boards are in, how much have they had to discount the in arena boards? Because I would think if I'm if I'm like Cal Tire, who I think are always on the boards Pet of the Smart. Leafs game, PetSmart, always on the boards of the Leafs game, how much less money are they paying? Because they're not getting shown anymore. Uh, my guess is a team like the Leafs is like, oh, oh no, my precious summer child. Yeah, we are keeping the money. If and I were the Leafs, though, I'd be like, okay, you're decreasing my ability to, to make money in my arena. So you better give me a split of whatever you make on the digital boards. See, it's not the Leafs that's causing this problem, though. It's the broadcaster. Right. Right. So, well, the NHL desperately wanted this. There must be a business case. Well, the the Leafs got to go. Uh, well, don't don't take it up with me. Take it up with the broadcaster. And then PetSmart goes, but you're owned by the broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> you son of a gun. Yeah, but that's in my left pocket. This is in my right pocket. Yeah, it's totally um, different. Adam, I've done the homework for you. Mullet Arena, not in NHL 24. What? Boo. Uh, due Boo. to licensing. Tempe? They, they can't do it. So it is... Due to licensing, they can't do it? No, laziness. <laughs> I think it's... Due to licensing. I think it's a uh, a college thing. Like, I don't know, but... The NCAA they, they, thing? I assume, but they have not licensed the rights to get uh, a mullet arena in NHL 24. It is generic. It's the same one as NHL 23, where it's the generic Arizona arena, and it has a full stadium. It's, it's 20,000 seats. So, uh, yeah, no mullet arena. It will never Listen, be in the game. They're just trying to speak it into the universe, right? It's like there the secret. Go. Just got to put it out there. I'm using my mind, and we will have an arena that looks like this and a bunch of people in glow sticks. Every broadcast should begin with, we're two weeks away from announcing that we're two weeks away from having an announcement. <laughs> I'm I'm About shocked we bought land or something. I'm shocked they didn't like go the extra mile to try and get in the game. I'm I thought not, I thought they would have. It's embarrassing. I thought they would have. I'm not. I'm not. They uh. They could have licensed it, Jesse. If Arizona, they had put it in their back. Yeah, I assume they could have. But yeah. the internet's telling me. Reddit's telling me uh, licensing. They well, probably couldn't. Well, Jesse, they uh, they did uh, spend the time to focus on a key detail. Uh, One percent of the crowd is Matthew Nye's friends and family. Ah, yes. true, true. That'll be fun. One tonight, of too. every 100 people you meet in the building tonight will know Matthew Nice. There are two goaltenders this year with 30 wins. Hmm. Name them. I was going to say Alexander Georgiev because he's played so much, but the Avs have been. Thatcher Demko. Kind of butt. Thatcher Demko oh, is Demko. one. Got to uh, be Hellebuck. Jesse? Connor Hellebuck. And Steve, you should have stuck with the original answer. It is Georgiev. No! And Georgiev got his 30th win last night oh! against the Vancouver Canucks and Thatcher Demko, who has 30 wins. Son of a gun. And, and you know, the Canucks are 0-3 for the first time this season, mm -hmm. which is wild. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. First three-game losing streak of the entire year, which Did is just wild. Did they not start the season last year on a three-game losing streak? Uh, yes, those were those uh, really bad games with the Oilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So where, where it's like both teams lost. It's quite a difference. Yeah, <laughs> huge. Uh, third period's a bit of an issue for the Canucks. Mm -hmm. They've gone into all of those games that they've lost, either tied or leading. Uh, specifically the 10-7 game, which we didn't get to yesterday. 
Uh, I think they were up five to three. But they got Sidorov. But they got Sidorov. Wouldn't happen with him on the ice. Uh I do think that the Canucks are going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. It's a three-game losing streak. It'll be fine. If February is a difficult mental month uh, for, I think, good teams mm -hmm. um, because obviously all year they've been so dominant. Um, and But there's always the... Like when teams are hot at the beginning of the season, from the hardcores, there's still like a bit of... Yeah, whatever. You got to peak at the right time. This doesn't actually mean anything, whatever. Um, but from a mental standpoint, you don't want to be playing your worst hockey in February either, do you? No. And this is probably their worst hockey. Yeah. Right? It certainly is in terms of results. So even though we all know they're probably going to be fine, I think there's maybe a little, I don't know if the word is panic, but... This this losing streak has their attention. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, I I don't know. I'm 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 not worried about it at all in the slightest. I'm sure there's some internal. They'll probably have to bag skate it. They'll probably have to clean up some stuff. Can actually be fine. Yeah. I I feel like a lot of fans are looking at the three game losing streak as they're like, hey, this is a big revelation on the team. There's there's problems here. We need to fix it all. But I think they've been lucky to not go through a slump like this so far. And I think even good teams, this happens to, and of they'll be fine. Yeah. You know, especially just the way they play hockey is something that they can sustain for a long playoff run. I don't think anybody should be concerned about the Vancouver Canucks. Now, uh, something just... special did happen last night. Right. Uh, Arshdeep Baines from uh, uh, Surrey, BC mm -hmm. became the fourth ever Punjabi player to play in the NHL. The other ones being Robin Bawa, Manny Mahaltra, and Jujar Kara. Um, played 13 minutes through three hits. Um, and his dad was there, mm -hmm. yeah. which was really cool. And I think it's just uh, just a, a, a good little story. I wish they'd got the win for him. Yeah, I know. It is it is really cool, though. And uh, like people have been excited from the moment he was called up. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that like deb NHL debuts are so much more about like the families and the coaches they had along the way and just the whole like minor hockey system they went through and having just the kid, you know, you watch grow up, reach the NHL. Like, uh, on his hometown team. Yeah. He's from Surrey. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's, it. it's even more of that than it is for like the player because there's like, okay, I'm going to have a million of these, hopefully off a thousand games one day. And this is my first one. It's obviously, obviously special. But the thing that like brings a tear to your eyes Watching his dad in the yeah, you I, know, like that's yeah. that to me, like that's warms my heart. I hope there was a camera on him the whole time. Mm -hmm. I would love to count just for science the amount of hands shaken. <laughs> oh, you know what I mean? yeah, it Congrats. feels like every, every time they show the the mom or dad, it's just like I mean, the game's about them. Yeah, it's not about it is, the player. Right? Yeah, like <laughs> dude, congrats, dude, congrats, dude. Congrats. It's like they're in the lineup. Your right? kids in the NHL. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you yeah. did a pretty good job. Pretty yeah. damn congrats. Cool. <laughs> um, Alexander Ovechkin has eight goals over an eight-game streak. After his first eight goals came over forty-three games, he's on a nine-game point streak. Two, one of those games, he got two goals. I think it was last night, but uh, eight goals in eight games. Is Alexander Ovechkin officially back? Well, Adam, I, I can't focus on that. Why not? I just, oh god, I'm so distracted, Adam. By what? I uh, my Netflix account has been locked. Why? Yeah, I got a text that says my Netflix account is on hold, and I think it's real. Oh no, I think it's very real. Do you think I should text in my credit card info? Yeah, I think you should. Yeah, okay. for is sure. This, it seems reputable. Are you trying to avoid talking about Ovi being good? No, I'm not. <laughs> uh, dude, <laughs> why? The, didn't I call this? Didn't I like? I said he was in for 35 goals this year. We we <laughs> allowed ourselves to be like, maybe he is a little bit cooked. And he certainly did look it, look it. Sure. Like, not even... Like, I don't think anyone was really calling him snake bitten even. Everyone was just mm -hmm. like, oh, he looks kind of useless mm -hmm. a yep. little bit. Goals in eight straight games. I mean, it's the most OV thing ever. It's, it's the most OV thing ever. He's still... So far away from that record, though. Mm -hmm. Like 56 goals. I don't think that's so far away. Well, it's well, not if he keeps scoring literally every. Fucking I think game. that's a that's a hang around pace now. Yeah, yeah, but three like, more years of 20 goals. When he was sitting at whatever it was, eight, seven, or eight goals. Right. It looked it looked far. Right. Now that he's scoring at like a uh, goal a game pace. Like, like what what's he on pace for now? Like even if it's 25. Right. Even still, like that's. 
he needs like two more seasons like that, full seasons, and then some. You could he couldn't do ten goals a year. You know, no. he couldn't stick around for ten goals a year for five years. That's a little too much. But if he's put it up twenty, I think Ovi's got enough legs in him to do three of twenty. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's, I think that's fine. That's doable. Man. Can you imagine? Man, it's wild that that record is going to get broken. Yeah. And Gretzky's still going to have like, I don't know, three or four dozen records. Every other name. record. Like, yeah. yeah. But that record looked impossible for, for a time. Oh, and now, yeah. now he's going to do it. And then Matthews is going to break it. So. He's on pace. If we're talking about pace. He's on pace. He's on pace. The assist record, like there's something that'll never get broken. Now, <laughs> pace is a very funny thing. Mm-hmm. Because uh, if you th- you've probably seen a bunch of stats uh, this season that Kale McCarr has hit a certain amount of milestones before Bobby Orr in Bobby Orr's career, if you compare, and that's true. But mm-hmm. there was a stretch in Bobby Orr's career that we're about to approach where he just is going to say to Kale, "Fuck off!" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he's just going to take. Right up, like one thing Cal McCarr has never done is scored like 120 points in a season. Yeah, and Bobby won the Orr scoring title. Bobby Orr scored 120, 139, 117, 101, and 122, and then 135, and then his career kind of fell off after that. Dude, so what's Kale, that? Five straight hundred plus points. Cal McCarr has to get six. in that neighborhood. You know, six straight. It's not it's six not just six straight hundred point years. Six. All of those years except for one are at least 110 or more, and four of the six are 120 or more. Yeah, so like this whole Matthews is on pace. Well, I think uh, I think it's a little different with. Let's Ovi. wait. <laughs> well, sure, uh, it's a little different with Matthews because it's a little bit more measurable, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Ovechkin is recent, right? Um, or came at a time where the NHL started to get goofy with assists yeah. uh, and with goals. Just the the seventies and eighties were just bonkers with the amount, and I feel like it's it's unfair to Kale McCarr to do a direct point for point comparison, right? Because I mean, if you watch the way that they played hockey back then, Bobby Orr could walk from one end of the ice to the other and no one would touch him. He, they couldn't uh, touch him. No. And every, he, every game looked like a, uh, like a fantasy camp scrimmage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like where he was, where the, where the star player is trying. Mm-hmm. Right. It's Michael <laughs> Jordan saying, fuck them kids. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> playing that against actually the kids. Yeah. <laughs> yes, like if the kids in that scenario had to play defense, yeah. Ovi also just has the longevity over Matthews, the way it's going. Like nobody p- plays at that pace into his elder years like he has been over the last couple of years like Ovi has. Like we haven't seen that before. So if Matthews can get that too and avoid injuries, then maybe. But it's such an impossible task, it feels like. We're at least five years away from legitimately having this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. He'd have to pad. He'd have to have a, like a couple seventy goal seasons, like in the next couple of years, to pad those stats, so that he doesn't have to have the longevity. Right. You know. Right. So he can make up for where Ovi's going to keep going in like his 35, 36 years. So Matthews could kind of tail off. He but. could have three straight seventy goal seasons and still finish nowhere close. Right. Eight hundred two like goals. That's how great the record is. Eight hundred two goals is a lot of goals. Mm-hmm. Eight hundred ninety four is even. Eight hundred. Oh, it's an eight hundred ninety four. Right. Eight oh two was the. Record Gretzky sets. Yes. 894 so, is where he left it. Yes. 894 is where he left it. And he had over a thousand professional goals because if you count the WHA yes. mm-hmm. with Indianapolis and what was the other team? The Racers uh, and. Well, the Oilers before they joined the NHL. Was he with the Oilers? Uh, no, I think it was just Indianapolis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It was just, yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. He used to play in Indianapolis. Indianapolis. <laughs> I wonder if fans at Indianapolis at the time knew they were watching the greatest hockey player of all time. Could they even have sold out that arena? Uh, I think they try- no, that was the thing. They were the owners like, nope, we're going to play this kid and he's going to save the team. And then he didn't. And they were like, all right, well, <laughs> let's fold the team. Guess we'll get rid of him. Yeah. <laughs> hey, this episode is sponsored in part by better help. And let me tell you, uh, it is, uh, it's the depths of winter mm-hmm. and it might be a sunny day outside here in Toronto, but there was, I think there was a, uh, from the start of winter here, to midway through January, there were 30 hours of sunlight. Wow. What? 30 what? hours of sunlight in Toronto. Are you counting yourself? Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sunshiny every time I walk into the room. Oh. And that's because, <laughs> that's because I've had therapy. Lots and lots of therapy. And BetterHelp is a great way to do that. You can be matched with somebody in like 24 to 48 hours. If you don't vibe with them, that's totally fine. Because you got to have chemistry with therapy. I have actually, in the past, had to switch therapists um, uh, because... I was, we just weren't clicking. And the next person I switched to 
was absolutely perfect. You and sometimes it takes a couple. Yeah. yeah, there's nothing. It's not. It's not. It's not. Uh, it's not personal. It's just something you got to do. The other thing that I think was is great with BetterHelp is a you get it done quick. B you can do it in a mode that works for you. When you know traditional therapy used to be you had to go into the office back in the seventies. They all laid on couches. I never went to a therapist's office that had that nice couch to lay on. Uh, no. So I was very disappointed the first time I went. I was like, "Where's my couch?" But what about this? <laughs> Laying on your own couch, doing it over the phone, doing it on video chat, doing it on just text chat. You can do it any way you want through BetterHelp, and uh, we want you to sign up and get ten percent off your first month. BetterHelp.com/sdp. Again, that's BetterHelp H-E-L-P dot com slash sdp. Jesse, Steve, what mm. would you say about Liquid IV? It tastes magical and wonderful, and it's great. For on on some days where I just don't even feel all that good, like I'm not sick or tired or whatever, you just I, feeling blah. I just feel blah. Throw a little liquid IV in there, put it put it in the in a little bit of water, stir it up. I like to pour a little bit in, drink some, add more water, add a little bit more liquid IV because it makes me feel like a scientist, and then I feel better. Jesse, in no time. We were gonna ask you how you felt about it, but we don't have time. No, I'm kidding. Go ahead. <laughs> I use it more for recovery because it's rapid hydration. I like to use it after I exercise. Like that's that's where I find it the best. And the lemon lime f- flavor is my favorite. It is a uh, <laughs> three times the electrolytes of your leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients. Non sugar free product only. Liquid IV hydrates faster than water alone. It's all in one stick. Uh, no GMO and free from any gluten, dairy, or soy uh, for daily use before workout. When you feel run down, when you're feeling blah or maybe after a long night out or a long flight. I know uh, Tim Haraney just flew to Bahrain, and one of the things he took with? Hey! There you go. Very smart. Uh, Weekends are for going wild. Monday is for Liquid IV. (laughs) Grab your Liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or 20% off your first order when you go to liquidiv.com and use the code DANGLE. That's spelled D-A-N-G-L-E. That's DANGLE. At liquidiv.com. 20% off your first order when you shop superior hydration today. Promo code Dangle, liquidiv.com. Great job, buddy. Uh, let's talk about this. Um, we've got Quinton Byfield. Oh, my God. With potentially the goal of the year. Now, Unreal. Jesse, potentially. Want, I'm going to give you, I say potentially because you got, you always got to. You don't have to send it to me. I can just bring it You up. got it? Okay. Yeah. You got you to always say, say potentially because there's always room for more. But Quinton Byfield. Could be the thing that saves the Los Angeles Kings from one of the what's looking like, at least right now, one of the most disastrous trades in their history, which is Pierre Luc Dubois for Velarde and uh, Ayafalo. Uh, Ayafalo and um, Kupari. <laughs> Maddie, just Maddie, are you seeing that for the first time, Maddie? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that nasty? Yeah. That is. Yeah, that might be like, than, uh, Owen Tippett had a pretty nasty goal uh, a few weeks ago. It, the Flyers. It might be better than Owen Tippett's goal. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty wicked. Like you cheat. I don't know what part of it we want to show. He set a man on fire in public. In the cheer. neutral zone part, Jesse. I think this is the most important, impressive part. He this puts little, it between yeah. Wierenski's legs. Because like, area here. look at that. Yeah, he's six foot five. You're not supposed to be able to do this. Like, look at him fly. Look at that. But he's, then, he's literally look at his take stick. Off. Though, look at his stick. So, look at his stick. It's in one hand and facing the wrong way. He and then foot to while he's adjusting his stick back into his hands, he kicks it up to where the stick is going to be, and then sets Merzlikens on fire. Sets everyone. Bokvist isn't even looking at him because he's, he's like, "Yeah, Wierenski's got this." And look at that stick. He's using a Sherwood, good old Canadian Tire special. Is he? Sherwood. It's not. It's, like, you keep saying that, but that's not sure what Sherwood is anymore. Sherwood is owned by Canadian. <laughs> it's tire. a yeah, wooden but it's, stick. It's not like your Canadian Tire no. brand of stick. It's a professional hockey. Doesn't stick. matter. It still no, says Sherwood, and that matters to <laughs> me. Thirty that's pounds. So, that's so old school of you to right? think of it in that way. Listen, as somebody- I see Sherwood, and I think of their like OVO collab with William Nylander and him carrying the ovio bag that in the leafs one listen you know they'll always be a canadian tire they'll always be the 15 dollars <laughs> special for me okay that turned into a road hockey stick that then turned into a toothpick okay look, look at where but look at him look at him look at the way his body is moving right here he if he started flapping his arms he would literally fly to the ceiling he is he's just and, and he's oh, gonna kick Zach. it and then he kicks oh, it up here yeah. oh oh tom hanks was less lost than castaway that is uh Ooh. Columbus, Ooh. Col- uh, man, Ooh. 
there's 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 a guy and by the way elvis if you keep not making saves you will be stuck in columbus forever that trade you yeah. want not gonna happen man i'm gonna go out on a limb and say this isn't his fault <laughs> <laughs> he should have saved that uh, that's no that's just should have saved it <laughs> that's an insane goal. should have saved Steve, it. uh i think you made one of the best points uh, about this clip off the top when we brought it up he's six five Quentin Byfield is projected like when he's coming up, he's to be a power forward type of player. And to watch a guy who's six five have these kinds of dangles and be that light on his feet and do something incredible like this, he's gonna be an exceptional player for like the next two decades of hockey. He, he it's gonna might, be fabulous. He might be getting the West Coast treatment a little bit, uh, but like you see that goal, you see that he's up to forty two points. Mm -hmm. Don't look now, Pacific Division. You might be fucked. <laughs> right. That's, yeah. uh, he needs, that's pretty crazy. He needs moments like this to have his coming out party because yes. it's been a little up and downish by the first couple of years. Yep. Mm -hmm. A lot. Some people got down on him, but like, there's always a belief that he's going to figure it out. And a moment like this is a great coming out party for for Quinton Byfield, and he's only going to continue to have more highlight reel goals like this. And and you know he's taken his lumps on this show, but like he's he's a line mate with Dubois. And, you know, line mates share each other's success, you know, whether they picked up an assist or not. I don't know if Dubois got I think assist. Dubois won the faceoff. Well, it? it... Pretty sure. I'd have to watch it again. The faceoff gets yeah, one... Yeah, Dubois. Yeah, but it gets one uh, back onto the Columbus side. It does? But I don't know if Dubois, like, poked it up to Byfield. Like, I don't know if that's a set. I think it was a poke. Or whatever, but... Because the Columbus Blue Jackets are not ready for this. And if you look at it, like, look, watch, watch, Steve, watch. Yeah. Steve? It does. No, it's a good question. I'm not sure. You, you know what? Like, you, me, you know how Matty, they just pull it off? I'll play it in real time. You know how they just um, changed hit statistics? Yeah. Face offs are next. Yes. You're making that shit up. I think this is a set play. No. Uh, no. It's it, one looks, back he, clean. it looks like he jumps the face off. It looks like Columbus. Well, that is one it. hell of a read. Then, are, yeah. Are we sure that that Dubois look, didn't look, flick so, it up? So watch, watch the puck here. It looks like Columbus wins it and he jumps it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Dubois got a piece of it. It's a faceoff. Yeah, and it doesn't look at him. Look like, at it's the not, wheels. It's not clean either. You know, He's it's a little full speed skip hop in a second from the beginning of the goodbye. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! That's like what Tage Thompson looked like last year, unhurt. That's not a bad comparable. You know, because they're so tall. And then mm -hmm. once their stride gets going, and if, you, if you're thin on defense, like if you can't catch, oh, if you can't, if you don't have anybody back, you're screwed. Oh, Dude, yeah. Wow. Tage Thompson, I, I like as a comparable because that's the only other guy his size doing Oof. shit like that. Yeah. Ooh. By the way, uh, everybody giving Tage Thompson shit. Remember, he's really hurt. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, no, I, chill. I, like chill. you chill on the Tage Thompson <laughs> stuff, guys. They, like the Sabres are down. Don't kick him. He's hurt. What? I might have made a made a smart fantasy trade. Has uh, Joseph Wall played? <laughs> Carter Verhage has. And oh, he's been lighting okay. that shit up. All right, all right. Morgan right. Riley's been good, except for when he got suspended. <laughs> and uh, Sergey Bobrovsky's been great for me. Um, I forgot Morgan Riley was in that. That's too. right. That's a big trade. Dude, Damn, dude, I got the starting goalie of the Panthers. Are you joking? That's a great trade. That's a great trade. <laughs> okay. Um, Pens lost the Yager game in Pittsburgh. We didn't get this. We didn't get to this, but but oh. uh, I, I have to throw this out there. This is the game I was trying to tell you guys about a little bit yesterday where they had this game was in the bag for Pittsburgh. Like Crosby scores in the first period. They lock it down in the second. OK, Kempe ties it up in the in the third. But when Kempe scores against. Did you see the goal against Jari? I have not. OK, this goal is pain. And I, I can Jesse, if you want me to send you sure. the box score thing. Um, this is Tristan Jari in a nutshell, which is, I see it. I've played a great game and I'm going to let it go. He's one of the most, he's mystifying. He's one of the most mystifying goalies of this generation because Every he's had a good year. His numbers they are good. Yes. And then you watch the goals he lets in and you go, is this a call up? Who is this? I'm going to die. Yeah, <laughs> dude. It, like, and they're, they are killer goals. Like they're goals that you're like, Oh, Backbreakers. yes. And so I think. It's a real shame that they couldn't win this one game for Yarmir Yag. It was a you can't lose this game, and for yeah. them to drop, you come out in the the wigs, mm -hmm. and you oh. put up a stinker like that. Like, do, do you have it? Crosby getting the only goal is a little on the nose. He's been amazing. You know game. what I mean? Oh yeah, Sid doing Sid things, and no one else. 
It's uh, what's Sportsnet players being? Yeah, the Sportsnet player takes a little bit of a minute. It's it's they it does it's hard for me, it to do a little heavy lifting on that. It was making me grumpy this morning. Here, there you go, Steve. All right, watch this. No, hold on. No, 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 no. can't show that. All right. We're not trying to get sued. There you okay, go. now so Pittsburgh takes it in the offensive zone. They turn it Good over. Steal. Good it's steal. Adrian Great. Kempe getting the pass. He can pass or he can shoot, and he shoots. Oh, dear. And, and, uh, and Jari sees it the whole way. All right, can we pause? It is a two-on-one. No, Steve. Yeah, it is Stop. a two-on-one. Stop. Any goalie will tell you that makes it harder. Jari has also been good this season. Yes. This so, is a Tristan Jari. Yeah. Adam's upset at Tristan the, uh, Jari yeah. stinker. It's a right. I mean, don't turn it over. Like, like look, put this up on screen, Matty. So Kempe is the guy with the puck. He is going to shoot, and it's going to go right through. It's not that he even goes high. It's not that he'd even go... Like, it's not a tricky shot. It's right through his pads. It's the same sort of shit that we used to see with occasionally with Jack Campbell and when Freddie Anderson was hurt. Yeah. It just goes... You're like, are is the goalie... <laughs> is, is that a, a, a... Is that like a hologram of the goalie, or is there a goalie there? Well, okay. This, this puck could go short side... It's probably not like you're Jari, right? So what are, what are you thinking? He's either going to shoot mm -hmm. or he's going to pass. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that means as the shooter, you go five hole because he's thinking about, I either got to extend at the legs right now, mm -hmm. or he had to, he had to make a choice because it's a two on one and he chose wrong. Yeah. Well, no, here's the problem. I know you Steve. need saves. Here's the like, problem. He gave you 30. What's the defenseman for? He gave you the defenseman's job is to cover 84. And I don't know. And that he's person. not doing it. No, he is doing it. No, he's, he's in the not. passing lane. He's good. All he has to do is step up on him and he's fine. And so all Jari's job is to do there is to watch the shooter. And he didn't do it. Sorry, I'm just pointing at the screen. Give me, give me that finger. Um, give me that he, finger. He, didn't, he didn't watch the shooter. He was watching the passer, which is why the shooter could score. I think this is indicative of a bigger issue that the Penguins have yes. and not on the specific save that Jar This made. Guys, I watched this game live. Three minutes and 13 seconds left. You need a fucking save. You uh, need a save. What about you need the, a save. What about the previous 31? Oh, and they're shorthanded? Or the sorry. The previous 31 saves that Jari made to keep oh, yeah. them in the game. Wait, but who the, has a power play right now? They're short. The Pittsburgh is shorthanded. Oh, or, oh, dude, you can't give up. A, no, Pittsburgh has no, a sorry, power sorry. play. Yeah, it was a LA short, is shorthanded. It was a shorthand. Sorry, I just rephrase it front. It was a uh, shorthanded goal that Pittsburgh allowed. Nah, sorry. in terms of laying blame here, uh, it for me it's on the turnover and the lack of attention. The, the over the, 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 the need to protect goalies in hockey discourse <laughs> is shocking. Adam, absolutely You got to pick your battles. This I think is, this like, is the right battle. This guy, uh, sorry, your goalie, it's the power play. You, you, you watch, this guy's not going to make that pass because you've got a guy right there who's going to block it. I think when you take a step back and you look at the overall season of the Penguins, they have so many deficiencies with their defense, That's with true. turnovers, with their inability to score timely goals, with their power play, which is one of the worst in the league, yep. that it's a bigger team issue than Jari, who has played relatively well. And OK, this, this goal here, should, it's got to be a stop of three minutes to go. This is the game winner. But it speaks to a larger issue that the team has in terms of their team defense it's, and team play. It's not some call up, you know, oh, Stubby Lemon just got called up from the Des Moines, whatever. Who? Like Stubby Lemon. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it's Sadrian Kempe. It's a two on one. I, I forgive him for this one, honestly. Yeah. The, okay. the turnover, too, is also a nice little pick out of midair. Yeah. Like, I don't even know how badly I blame that player. Who? You know it? what? Let's play Russ? nobody. That You know what? It's cool. You know, good no, on the Penguins like, okay. and put in a good effort and moral victory. No, uh, you know what? You, moral victories okay. are really good when Adam, you're fighting for a playoff but, spot. Byfield's goal on the Blue Jackets. Whose fault was it? Whose fault was it? Yeah. I mean, well, it was Wierenski getting his pants taken down and put put around his head. Like, yeah. Ridiculous. Well, so it's Wierenski's fault. It's not Byfield. It's got, he's got it. Oh, absolutely. It's a little bit of both. Uh, is, is this not Adrian Kempe and Tristan Jari? I Have mean, I not given Adrian Kempe credit? Have I not said? He's an all-star. He's a good player, man. I know. What are you saying? I'm saying I... I You're listen, saying that it's I've just... I've seen Jari allow far shittier goals than that. This is that this is a... You have to you have to take into consideration. It's short-handed. Three minutes to go. Yeah, and there shouldn't be a two-on-one there. That's on the team. So I think that's Lars Eller 
uh right there number 20 i think that says 20 yeah, I think you're on the jersey so that's lars eller who's 16 if i'm Russia? blaming anybody on this goal that's no. uh matthew phillips who's the right winger there who gets picked off if i'm blaming anybody on this goal it's lars eller for his little flip to matthew phillips it's kind of unnecessary why like, is lars eller out on the power play well, that's because Pittsburgh can't score <laughs> I think that speaks to the issues. They have a power play here. This is the second unit, okay, mm -hmm. but it's Lars Zeller and Matthew Phillips, yep. and they're trying to enter the zone, and Adrian Kempe is like, I'm Adrian Kempe. I can just walk up and take this puck. Also, that's I'm pretty sure that's Matthew Phillips' like first or second game as a Pittsburgh Penguin. <laughs> Uh, and I'm willing to bet that uh, hurt his feelings. So if we look watch, how small he is. If we watch this, look zone at him entry, compared to Eller. <laughs> if That's we watch nuts. This zone entry again. It's a little lazy in there. It's Lars Eller who gets to the blue line. He flips it to Matthew Phillips. Kempe picks it off easily. Goes the other way. Scores this goal. Two teams that have been struggling. One of them had to win. I just feel like the Penguins. This is their season in a nutshell. It's uh, yes, here's, I here's agree a, with that. Here's an obvious thing that we can do right. Oh, uh, we fucked it up. I 100% agree with that. And I think Pittsburgh is going to be on the outside looking in when it comes to playoff time, because this has been the case all season long where they cannot string anything together. That's productive. I yeah. can't wait to hear about how they played really well, though. <laughs> Matthew Phillips listed at um, five foot eight, a buck 60. Oh, good for him, though. I just thought I'd throw that out there. He was the guy who um, we all thought Brad Living was going to sign this summer. Because oh. he, he was putting up ridiculous numbers in the minors, and everyone's like, yeah, but he's tiny. And it's like, okay, but the numbers. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, the the goal, the Golden Knights, the, um, the Kings are also playing well. Like, let's look at yeah, the, I don't think they're, great. they're they're the downtrodden kings that they were at the beginning of this year. They're, I think they're on a four-game winning streak now. And the Penguins, if we're talking about the Penguins struggling, uh, they lost last night again in uh, overtime to the Islanders. Man, did oh, they give like, up an un untimely goal? That's crazy. <laughs> wow. They got five of them, which isn't pretty. No, but, that's wait, not like them. Uh, yeah. wait, did the Islanders have like a 3-1 lead in the game? Yo, they let the Islanders score or? five? Damn. It was a, it was a comeback loss. To be fair to Pittsburgh, at the end of what? the second, they tra they trailed three two. Yeah, so they came back and they they force OT. Oh. They lose five four. And the Isles, by the way, wait, I was kidding. So no, the Isles blew it again. The, yeah, the yeah. Isles were up in the game. Yeah, Yo. that's not the Islanders. I reckon. <laughs> by the way, like, I think such a different team. I the think, Islanders were up three one. I think game. that this offseason, no, I was that's literally, that's, I made that up. No, oh that is God. they were up three one in the middle of the second period, and they ended up they won though they won. I know, but that's <laughs> painfully this season's Islanders yeah. team. Oh you know God. what? It's painfully <laughs> post Barry Trotz Islanders. Man, that that team. I'm I'm telling you, they they need a change of direction upstairs. I think they do. They have such good pieces. They do. Oh, it's, it's like Vancouver. You get, you have mm. good pieces and you go, okay, are we going to tear this down or are we going to keep this and make a few subtle adjustments and not signing guys who were born in 1960? The horses they have. Adam. <laughs> 1960? Yeah. Oh, Lou's a little older than that. And <laughs> I, I'm not talking about Lou. I'm talking about the players they signed. Oh, so we need to. <laughs> we need the oldest guy in the league every year, except for Mark Giordano. That's. I was about to say that's pretty rich. The Leafs actually have him. Yeah, but they don't have a team of them. Right. I think. I think what the Islanders thing is, you've got such an incredible goaltender. You've got amazing defense. You do need some scoring, and you need you need to figure out really what your identity is because they used to be with Barry Trotz. You knew what they were. That could be a pretty unreal. Like their defense like, is crazy. Not Pelich, Pollock. Like those are great. Retool. Yeah, it could be a really. They could be an unreal real retool team. Mm -hmm. I still, I still think of the Islanders as a team I don't want to play in the playoffs. Right. <laughs> and you probably won't have to. Oh, I think yeah. Oh. I think Detroit's going in that. We spot. might have to change our mentality on that. No, one. but like okay, you have a seven game series. They have Ilya Sorokin. Mm -hmm. They have like three really, really, really good defensemen. They have Brock Nelson, who scores playoff goals. They have... Um, Marzal. Uh, well, yeah, obviously Matthew Horvat, Marzal. Horvat. Who the hell's... Who's their captain again? Not Brock Nelson. Anders Lee. Is Anders it? Lee, thank you, who also scores playoff goals. Like, I still... Yeah, you know, the thing about it is that the Columbus Blue Jackets were also a team 
you wouldn't want to play in the playoffs, except yeah, for they were like twenty third when the Leafs played them or I whatever it was. No, they were like eighteenth. That's not fair. No, the, the and, when the when the Leafs played the Blue Jackets, the Leafs were the eight seed. The Blue Jackets were the nine seed, and they were tied in points. They were t- like the Leafs weren't making the playoffs. Though. No, because they were a shit team as I yeah. at the beginning of the show. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's, let's give Blue Jackets credit, but they that. were not making the playoffs that year. I just I don't. Listen, the Blue, there the aren't Blue Jackets many, were totally in a position to make the playoffs that season there aren't many teams in the league who aren't in a playoff spot where i look at them and i go oh they can make noise if they make it the islanders are still one of them Mm -hmm. maybe i'm wrong i think they needed i i'm two teams i'm really watching if they don't make the playoffs this year pittsburgh and and the islanders yeah i think that those are going to be fascinating stories because if if i'm islanders ownership that's two years in a row without the playoffs. That's a, a complete fall off a cliff since you, listen, you could have held Barry Trotz and kept him there, paid him what he was worth, and he would not be running the Nashville Predators and canceling you two trips right now. Okay? <laughs> he And by the way, I have all the respect in the world for Barry Trotz. Look what he did with the Islanders. I know. Look what he did with the Caps. Look at the state of both of those franchises right after he left to this day. That, that, to this day! That milk is long spilt. Uh, like both of those teams have never out. recovered. I know. I know. That milk is long spilt. They got to figure it out. You guys want to play a game? Yeah. Okay. Always. So the Pittsburgh Penguins last night, as I mentioned, they played the New York Islanders. They lost 5-4 in overtime. They scored four goals, right? Right. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. I want you in three guesses mm. to name me any one of their goal scorers. That's not Lars Eller because he had one of the goals. So three mm-hmm. other players scored the three other goals. You're gonna have three guesses. Get one of the guys. For the Penguins? Yeah. Crosby. No. Oh. That's one guess down. Shit. <laughs> obviously. Well, I shouldn't say obviously, but the one guess down. You got two more. Name it. Name Gensel's one. Gensel's out. Mm-hmm. By the way, I'm hearing things that Gensel is p- perhaps more hurt than we know. Ooh. Mm. Not good. Um, Makes a trade trade deadline less interesting. Yes. Jeff Carter. Incorrect. You got one guess left. Adam, do you want to weigh in? I need, we need like, I can look up the roster. No, you no. can't. No, that's the whole point. Like Daily face off. I don't know. <laughs> no, who's that's, playing for that's the whole point. Uh, <laughs> Damn, the fuck you wouldn't have the stats on it. I just need what to know who played. You know? I need to know who dressed for them. Exactly. Um, who's <laughs> like a depth player that, that is Buzz Flippett? It, it has to be because Teddy Bluger is not there anymore. Brian Rust isn't there anymore. Pooley RV, I don't think. Not Pooley RV. He doesn't no. have a point yet. Edmonton media would explode. Not not I want you to name one of them. By the way, Pooley RV has not scored stars. a single point since going to Pittsburgh. Not a single. Eek. Who's the Mark guy? Specters. <laughs> over oh, the moon. Just, <laughs> just <laughs> wetting himself with excitement. They got someone from the Jets off waivers. Is it Jansen Harkins? Is that your final guess? I guess not. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Mark Johnstone. Give me that's it, that's your guess. Marcus Pedersen. Adam Wild, everybody. Whoa! Marcus That's Patterson. unbelievable. I love him. Marcus Patterson opened the scoring in the first period yes. for the Pittsburgh. His third goal of the season. Wow. Jesse's got tears in his <laughs> The other two goal scorers, Valtteri Pustinen. Oh, yeah. Valtteri Pustinen. His, Definitely his, a guy. His second goal of the season. And then Drew O'Connor scored the fourth goal for them. Wow. From the Avs? He's on the Penguins. No, I didn't. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. For that. No, I'm Where thinking of Logan, I think. Yeah, I think you're thinking of Logan oh, O'Connor. Damn. Uh, it's just there's wow. that's an empty, empty calories worth of names. Oh man. You know? oh, <laughs> As, oh dear. You know, they're oh. they're trying to fill the they're trying to do the Toronto thing. Fill the gaps. The thing is is that when you have all that money tied up in those players and they're old, at least the Toronto core was in their twenties. Did you yeah. see what Crosby was asked? What was he asked? Mm. He was asked about the potential of playing somewhere else. And? He said, I want to be a penguin for life. I've always said that. And I know he's always said that. Of course he's always said yeah. that. Yeah. We'll see how I'm many just, playoffs he wants to miss. I'm just saying that thing that we said on this show months ago that people gave us a lot of shit for. Yep. It's all of a sudden become a noisy topic. And I think that might be because it's based in a little bit of truth. They miss the playoffs next year. There's fireworks. Nah, just stay there and rot. I'm sure that's what he wants to do. Especially because uh, you know what competitive he's having, guys love doing. He's Who's, having a crazy year, dude. He's unbelievable. Yep, that's one thing you can't deny about this team is that Crosby's been incredible. He fucking rules, man. Yeah, he rules. He's amazing. Um, uh, by the way, 
not that it's going to happen this year because it won't. It's going to take another year of missing the playoffs for this to happen. But if Crosby ever does get traded, the Penguins rebuild will will get supercharged. Mm. Whatever they get mm. back, like this has the potential to be, even though the players are are different ages, uh, like a Lindros Forsberg trade. Because because yeah. what you would have to give up to move Crosby under contract at a reasonable term, mm-hmm. thirty one other saving. teams. Oh. 31 other teams are calling Kyle Dubas. You better get a haul. And Kyle's, yo, Kyle's a good trader. He really is. He's very, very good at getting assets and trades. When he's allowed to make trades. Yes, when he's allowed to. I think that Marc-Andre Fleury trade would have been really good. Brandon Hagel is a leaf. Now, it would have meant Matthew Nyes is is in Chicago now, but I think we could have lived with that. Brandon Hagel's pretty fucking good. That's what I'm saying. He's pretty fucking good. He would have been your Zach Hyman replacement. And at the same cost, too. Damn. I know. It's painful. It's painful. It's all right. Matthew Nye's better. Yeah, I do like Matthew yep. Nye's. Now, Matthew this is better. a weird story, but something that we have seen before. The Ontario Hockey League uh, is investigating the Sudbury Wolves regarding accusations that a bounty was placed on an opposing player. The way this can work sometimes is that players uh, are, you know, teams are upset with a player on another team. Coach puts money on the board. Who's going to target that player? It used to happen in the 70s and 80s all the time, mm-hmm. especially in the AHL and, and other other leagues like it. Um, but you have to remember with the OHL is that the majority of the people playing are children. So it's yeah, man. So like, 16 to 20. So at least half are children. The rare example of a 21-year-old. Uh, during the Sudbury Barry Colts game on January 18th, Colts defenseman Kashawn Atchison delivered a hard but legal hit to Wolves forward Nathan Villeneuve. There was no penalty on the play. Atchison uh, then fought one of Villeneuve's teammates, Nolan Collins, and then they both would have been booted because you can't fight in the OHL. The two teams played each other again three games later, but Barry did not dress Atchison. According to sources, word reached the Colts that of the possibility of a bounty being placed on Atchison, so the organization made the decision not to play him. When asked about the alleged bounty, the OHL said the investigation uh, incident, excuse me, of the investigation is ongoing. Uh, would not comment further. Um, yeah, Sudbury will not has not returned comment either. The Tombs teams play again in seven days in Sudbury. <laughs> I think that would be the safest time to dress Atchison because or Atchison if that's a, I'm pronouncing his name right. Um, that is that's crazy, man. That's well, crazy. and like I'm sure someone's reading that story, going, "Well, if you just let them fight, then it wouldn't be a problem." Like, no, dude. It's like, easy to say that when you're not running the league that's going to get sued later. Well, there's that. When you you know, like if you have no stake in this, if you got no skin in this game, you didn't invest your money, mm-hmm. work your whole life to be commissioner, whatever else these positions of power take years and years and years to get into, okay? Uh, it's super easy for you to say. It's easy for you to say that, you know, you don't own the Colts. So you don't worry about the Colts' asset loss. You don't worry about the the, the destruction of the Sudbury Wolves' reputation, potentially, uh, because of this incident. You don't worry about any of that. But the people, the stakeholders that are in it do. I, uh, you know, sometimes these these guys in junior, uh, they get a little older. And it's like, a, you know, a circus tiger seeing grass for the first time. They, they, they can't believe... That's what the world looks like and how it functions. You know, like uh, you had Justin Davis on Agent Provocateur, former junior player. Didn't he play in the Sioux? Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, yeah, he played in the Sioux. Multiple concussions. Multiple concussions, and his stories are his, his, wild. The craziest and- story is he got a concussion in the States, and the team didn't want him to go to the hospital mm-hmm. because they would have had to pay the American medical bill. So they asked him, even though he was bleeding on the brain, they didn't know this. Because yeah. he hadn't been checked out by a medical professional. He's a teenager. Yeah. They asked him to sit on the bus and drive across the border and then go to the hospital. And had he not gone to the hospital, he could have died. Yeah, man. And like it, but a lot of the stories, like the way he puts it, um, like he didn't even really think of as abnormal. Oh, yeah. Until he got out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's what I'm, that's the tiger comparison. Like it's just, it's just your life. It's just a life you were thrust into and you wanted and you want to make the show and you want to play pro puck and then you get out of it all of a sudden and you talk to other people about your experiences and they all look at you sideways like, what the hell are you talking about? That's not normal. Yeah. Oh, and you didn't get paid for it. 
Yeah. Like, <laughs> you didn't get paid to do it. You know what? You made me look like a fool on that presentation on Monday. So I'm putting a bounty on Jim's head. <laughs> and I'm going <laughs> to. Yeah. We're all going to beat the shit out of Jim. Yeah. Well, it's like, <laughs> you know what where I mean? do you work in this scenario? Uh, Dunder Mifflin. I was just imagining, <laughs> just imagining Jim getting his ass beat. Yeah. I mean, he probably deserved it a couple times. Yeah. Past, but. Listen, if he was some of the stuff Jim did, a little underhanded. You know that time he lifted up Pam. That was bad. What the fuck, Jim? Uh, uh, no, she was she was engaged. Like, she was. You crossed the line. Also, there. she she needed to say she needed to boundaries. Yep. Place some boundaries. Are Jim and Pam bad people? There is a, a thread on the internet that believes that they're bad people. Yeah. There's I a, ultimately think theories. they acted poorly in certain mm -hmm. situations, but they, they did love each other, right? Yes. So you got to give them that. I think it all works out in the end. Like everybody's with the right people, but how you got there is messy. Like toxic. life. Toxic. <laughs> toxic. Toxic. <laughs> <Never> toxic. <laughs> uh, Jesse, should we do the press conference? Sure. We definitely can. The presser. SDP. The Steve Dangle Press Conference. All right, this Twitter user named Most Okayest Matt <laughs> tweeted, Hey, Adam. It's important to recognize where you're at. They, they said, at Adam. Hey, Adam, what are your thoughts on McDavid getting second star of the week with only assists? Man. What? Is that a thing that happened? Yeah, that is a thing that happened last How week. How many? Uh, Nine? Three stars of the week. Yo, that's NHL. crazy. Didn't he get like six in that. one game, though? Stars of the week. He, got, he got six in one game, yeah. Uh, da, da, I just want to find da, out what, how many he had because I already have my opinion on this and that's not going to change. But I think it's important to put in contact. I don't have the fuck. How many were stats. secondary? You know, bum. I don't think McDavid has a lot of secondary assists. I don't know. I think he creates most of what happens. Is McDavid a secondary assist merchant? Car cardio no. merchant. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we All go. right, I got it up. Uh, so, <laughs> Whoa, shit. three stars of the week from February 12th to 18th. Austin Matthews, first star. Six goals, two assists, Lol. three games played. That's because goals matter more. Connor McDavid, Whoa. second star, zero goals, ten assists, three games. That's really and funny. It's, you know what's crazy about Connor? Ten points in three games, you should be a top three star of the week. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, did you see the assists? Now, I love, you know you know how I feel. Austin should be number one here. He scored the most goals. Goals matter more. End of story. But did you see the assists that Connor McDavid put together? Especially in that game. He didn't have six points in one his of those games. His assists are goals, let's be honest. Outrageous. His play, The players on his line don't need to move. They just, no. just go stand here. I'll get you the puck. I would. That's That'd be a great stat to track. How many assists were uh, the person you set up to score didn't move <laughs> they were just stationary they were just feet <laughs> feet traveled by goal scorer per 60 per, per 60 I, expected by whom <laughs> well like I, I don't remember who set him up but remember when Bertuzzi missed like a wide open net and someone I think it was Matthews was like just stand in front <laughs> and then he didn't <laughs> just like that he just yeah stood there and friggin uh, finally went in I'm, I can't wait till he scores with a shot so this is the thing I uh, I think Connor McDavid absolutely deserved it, and had Matthews not had back to back hat tricks, Connor McDavid should have been first star of the week. Goal or not, goal, goals or no goals, Connor McDavid is Connor McDavid deserves it. Happy to give it to him. Flowers given. Matthews is such a lunatic. <laughs> I love it. Um, Matthew Kachuk was the third star there uh, of the week last week, and I got fun, interesting stat about Matthew Kachuk that nobody's kind of noticed here. Uh, since December 22nd, 2023, Matthew Kachuk leads the world in points. You're kidding. Yeah. Matt, uh, Matty, bring that off so I can wow. get my, my little stat sheet does that, that count, I was looking at. Does that count playoffs as well? Uh, 2023. So December of oh, like, I'm a this season. So, yeah, I was looking. I was just on uh, Quant Hockey where I like to just isolate my days. And when you go back to December 22nd. Matthew Kachuk has played 24 games since then. Connor McDavid has played 22. Nathan McKinnon has played 24. Pasta has played 26. Matthew Kachuk has 43 points wow. in that span. He leads the entire NHL. You know since, what? Since Christmas, Matthew Kachuk is the leading point getter in the NHL. If the question for the Flames was keep Kachuk or trade the rest of the roster, <laughs> oh, or trade Kachuk, or tra everybody. they should have traded everybody. Well, they're about to. This guy, They are. Matthew Kachuk 
continually proves why the Flames were wrong about him. His his teammates, I'm talking specifically about the Jake Muzzin incident. Uh, this guy is so unbelievably good at everything. One notable thing, I think, from the the isolation of these dates is the time on ice that Matthew Kachuk plays in comparison oh, wow. to the guys that he's at the top of the points race with. Pretty low. Matthew Kachuk plays 18 minutes and 26 seconds uh, the time on ice in that span. Connor McDavid, 21 minutes. McKinnon, 23 minutes. Pasta, 20 minutes. Kucherov, 22 minutes. Austin, 20 minutes. And then his teammate, who's seventh in points in that amount of time, is 18 minutes. Carter Verhage. Carter Verhage. So Suck it, Ian Tullock. Math- the train sucked. Matthew Kachuk here is doing more with less time. It's very impressive. Damn. Hot damn. Um, they're going to be so hard to beat, dude. Yep. <laughs> they're they're going to be a really good I think playoff. Florida's in for a good little run once again this playoffs. Uh, uh, yeah. There is a report I just want to throw in there. Sorry. Once we're done with this topic, I I, I do want to bring something up very quickly. to go. News? Some news. Sure. The show is not live, so you do not have to break I'm in. sorry. Pierre Lebrun uh, New news? was on Insider Trading. Okay. And he said, and this is, has to do with the Penguins, that the Penguins are de- gearing up for a fire sale. Mm. That they're listening to everything on everybody except for Crosby. No, so oh, they're yeah. gonna they're gonna fire sale the team, get worse, but next year they'll be better, and Crosby won't want to trade. Yeah, you know what you uh, don't want to trade is your most valuable uh, trade chip. Well, I, I can understand them wanting to not trade him. I could just I just think that's not an, a, a smart evaluation of where you are. Right? Is Malkin or Latang available? Boy, it's getting noisy. Sure is, huh? Um, Jesse, what's the next question? Sorry to jump in with that. I just figured that would add to the conversation. Black Wizard 28449 writes. <laughs> if the playoffs, I love the names, by the way. The names rule. <laughs> if the playoffs started tomorrow, Bruins or Panthers, is Ryan Reeves in the starting lineup? Uh, yes. Uh, Bruins and uh, unpopular opinion. Game one, yes. Yes. Game that's what I was gonna say. Both Game of one. you said yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then they're gonna find out why. <laughs> they're gonna find out. Is this Kyle Clifford 2.0? Yeah. <laughs> no, but like teams do that at the beginning of playoff series. They're like, all right, go out there, hit as many human beings as possible. All right, thank you for your service, and go to the press box. Yeah, we need suspended we need to- five minutes into the game, so we play the rest of it shorthanded. Yes. Kyle Clifford. It's a miracle they won that game. <laughs> And yeah. they won a five nothing. Yeah, they, and then lost. They also, you know, they'll need to make room for guys like Noah Gregor. Hell S- yeah, specifically for Steve. Hell yeah, I, the turn for you with Noah Gregor has been one of the funniest things to watch. I don't think you've ever hated a Leaf more. I know. I don't hate him. I don't hate him. It's it, hated, he was hated well. in the way you don't like his game and you don't want him in the lineup. Not literally, you hate the man. Well, like he was. <laughs> He was. You know what? That's a good distinction, by the way, because people do think that they're like, "Why do you hate this person?" I'm and their sure family? he's a great like, guy. I don't. <laughs> Seems like a great guy. No, he was. He was skating real fast. He was hard nosed. He was scoring like every now and then. And now that he hasn't scored for like 30 games, and also has not been particularly good, I'm like, all right, you can go. And like, also, he's been surpassed. Like, mm-hmm. we've seen enough of him, and we've seen enough of Robertson that I'm like, all right, put Robertson in there. And we've seen enough of McMahon that I'm like, all right, put McMahon in there. And all of a sudden, you're not in there. Even Reeves. But we've seen enough. Of, oh, Holmberg recently. Like, he's Sheldon been surpassed Keith, by a lot of guys. Sheldon Keith likes running out Noah Gregor. Not the last game, he didn't. Not yeah. Yeah. But as of like before that, you know, yeah, consistently oh yeah, that. for the last month, you know, before Noah Gregor's had a place in the lineup when he probably, probably guys who have edged him out. Um, wh- which one did you pick, Adam? Bruins or Panthers? I say uh, he's going to be in. I, it, they could play uh, the Flint Thunderbirds in the playoffs <laughs> and Ryan Reeves will be in game one. But I think by game three or game four, we'll see if Ryan has established himself because I think there are games with the least where he's effective and there are games with the least where you're like, he can't play. Mm-hmm. And so it, what Ryan Reeves will have to do in game one and potentially game two, if they get him that far, is establish that he belongs in that series. And he'll have to do that. Every, the, the thing that pisses me off about the Leafs, though, is they always do that in game one. They shorthand their own lineup. They don't dress their best guys because Kyle Clifford's got to get in. And and to me, no, I, I don't understand why you don't just here's the best skill lineup and we have some toughness. 
Everybody's going to contribute. Let's try that. Oh, that didn't work. We need a little more toughness. Now we'll put Ryan Reeves. Yeah, in. but the Leafs needed that. You you got to remember that Clifford was two years ago. Oh, I know. They needed the grit. And then last year, they had enough grit throughout the actual lineup, like dudes who play hockey well, <laughs> that they were like, oh, okay, we don't need that. Right. And Agreed. They went out in the summer and got the biggest one of those. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I, I just feel like the Leafs should try winning game one. That'd be good. They never do that. <laughs> um, I don't know if that's going to work. I'm just, listen, I'm gaining optimism for the team. Mm-hmm. Uh, over oh, sure. This, over this four-game point streak. Mm-hmm. I like the way they're playing. Boy, the, the top of the Atlantic Division is so fucking good. They are good. The that East, sucks, man. The East is really deep this year. Yeah. There's a lot of good teams in the Eastern Conference. Which one would you rather play, the Bruins or the Panthers? Uh, Bruins, I'm not overly stoked about that matchup, though. Yeah. Adam? Oh. Neither. Like, the Panthers are kind of one-lined, and the Bruins are not quite as deep as they were but like the Leafs also don't have the greatest depth either they both have really good goaltending they both have pretty good decors yeah yeah like I think I think one thing I'll give the Leafs credit for this year is they've gone after the boogeyman Mm -hmm. so like I talked about it yesterday with Max Domi going right at uh, 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 Radko Gudis not at random when he pulled some chicken shit Radko Gudis stuff which we love Radko Gudis for sure what I'd like to see the Leafs do is go right at the Fl- Florida Panthers. Oh, you're going to play that way? We can play that way too. Uh, where they are a vastly different, the Leafs are a vastly different team. And I don't know how much of the Panthers Bruins series everybody watched last year. It was can't miss, so good. And you know who was an absolute animal yeah. against the Panthers? Yeah. Tyler Bertuzzi. Oh, he, was, yeah, he had a good series. Yeah. I want to see Tyler Bertuzzi do that against the Panthers. I, and win. I I just I pray I pray to the Lord above that uh, Bertuzzi and Tomi have other gears. Because oh, I think they do. They were both so good in the playoffs. Yeah, they had twenty three points combined. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just want to correct you when you say one line of the Panthers. You mean they have an incredibly deep top six? Well, one line is doing the majority of the scoring. Let me read you the top six. Okay. First line is Verhage, Barkov, Reinhardt. Second line is Cousins, Bennett, Kachuk. That's death for any yeah. six hockey players that go up. Well, against. their power play lineup too. They can, yeah. The Cousins, Bennett, Kachuk. You might as well call that the CTE line. Like that is because uh, that is. I know, what CT, I know it's CTB, but uh, but <laughs> that is trying to hand out as many brain injuries as they can. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think that's the one of the, if not the best top six in hockey. Like, and don't right now. don't sleep on Lundell as well, dude. Yeah, oh, third, good line, player. third line's nothing to laugh at either. No, no, I'm not saying the rest of the roster. Shit, call them one lined. Yeah, because one line does the majority of the damn scoring. It's true. I, I don't know, but um, like, I even look at this roster, and even even someone who you probably don't think about, like Nico Mikola, I'm like that fucking guys on the Panthers. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I just don't, Brandon, I don't want I, anything to do with that series. I, I don't know how I haven't tracked Brandon Montour's stats, but he was so good last year. He was stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just would like him not to be not the same amount those. of production uh, this year, but okay. uh, like a guy like OEL. Oh, just, shit. Not the same amount. Like, okay, so he had 73 points last year. Yeah. He has 70, 17 this year. In how many games? Well, he played 80 last year. He's played 40 this year. He's played 40 games? Yeah. I thought he missed way more time. Than Me that. too. Yeah. Woo! Uh, yeah. He might be he, hurt. I didn't know he made it into all 40, but yeah, just the points aren't there anymore. It seems like that season's going to be an albatross on how he plays, but he's still a good defenseman. Yeah, there's nothing to take uh, away from. I'm not. I'm not stoked for that series. <laughs> I would I, if it happened. I was gonna say OEL, who's become a depth defenseman for them, is still still has it in him. At sure, some points, you 100%. know, like I, I believe like that game is is gonna be there for forever. You know, as long as he's he's in the league. So there's somebody who's just their depth defenseman, but he's also very talented and has played upper in the lineup. Before. Here's here's what I what bugs me about both of those teams is they both have good solid goaltending, but one and two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, like I don't. Okay, so you get into Linus Olmark's head, and he and you drop five on him, and they pull him. Well, then you got to play Jeremy Swayman. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> Fuck that. There's, there, That's why I'm like, I, and then it's like, well, you get it at Bobrovsky's head and then you got to play. Like, just there might be an argument come playoff time that Swayman's the starter. Probably. Well, that was their, that was like their main reason they lost to the Panthers last year. The refusal to go to them. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. I think it ultimately cost them the series. You know, if you go to Swayman earlier, you probably end up uh, in the second round. And then you have a good shot. Do you have a good shot at the cup? I, I just think the Leafs, um, for the changes they've made this year, which again, I've been completely behind. If they had, if their depth players were scoring at their career averages, <laughs> We have had a completely different series. Oh, season. President's Trophy. Yeah, that's a great, <laughs> like, seriously. Yeah. And so one thing that the Leafs have have done, really, the only dragon they've really slayed is the Tampa Bay Lightning, right? That was That's a team that beat them. They came back the next year. They beat them. Every time, you know, when, when they played Boston, we all know they lost and then lost again both times in Game 7. I want to see the Leafs. They've done it before. We've seen them do it. Let's see them take on the Florida Panthers, Mm -hmm. and then let's see them take on the Boston Bruins. Uh, Slay the dragon, because the confidence, if you beat those two teams, that that team would have. Yeah, we thought that last year with the Lightning, though. Well, nobody was ready for the Panthers. Nobody was ready for the Panthers. No, They were were a complete torpedo. Nobody saw this coming. And this isn't to discredit the Leafs. I think they can hang with the Panthers. Sure. I think the Leafs will be in a series. I Yeah. Even if it's not a long series, I think the games will be decently Mm -hmm. close. Um, they played them well this year. The times they've gone up against them. Yeah, well, ah, man. I'm trying to remember all the games, but I know. Well, and and like, I feel like the Bruins games have been pretty close. Mm-hmm. Ah, fuck. It's just every year. <laughs> it's dude. Like the thing about slaying the dragon is you lose often enough, you realize oh, there's a lot of dragons. Yeah, but yeah, that's, <laughs> they're not as endangered. That's as they once the thought. league every year. There's yeah. never going to be a year off. Like every nope. time you get to the Stanley Cup playoffs, there's a reason people uh, it's revered as the toughest playoffs and the toughest championship to win because every team you go up against is going to be a tough battle. And there, if you expect like, hey, this year they'll get an easy matchup, it's never going to happen. Yeah. Especially in this conference with this division that's so good, it's never going to happen. Every year is going to be a difficult team to beat. It's the Royal Rumble and everyone's having a go. But you know, if they're on one end of the... R- if one of them is on one end of the ring and the other is on the other end, you know the Vegas Golden Knights <laughs> are looking at the Edmonton Oilers and going, "Hey, motherfucker, <laughs> I'm coming for you!" <laughs> like, We're going at it again. <laughs> it, it's the the best teams take on the best teams. That's yeah. how it works. And like eventually, right. Tampa will fall off, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, Detroit's been good for four years now, and they're fucking dominating." Yeah. You know, like there's gonna be a new team that steps up. So if the Leafs want to get it done, they just got to get it done one of the years, these years and beat these good teams. It's a hard league, man. It's a hard very league. hard league. Next one. Uh, we can do one more. Yeah, let's do one more. No, These are fun. Let me let me pull this up. So, next question. This is from Dejected Soup on our Discord. <laughs> That's what I'm, see what I'm saying? SDPN.ca, join us on Discord. Just subscribe to SDP VIP. Do everything. Um, my wife is a little new to hockey, and she overheard me listening to the latest podcast Ooh. where you guys were discussing Bennington's fine. Mm. She's wondering if the term known dick appears in an official NHL glossary of terms describing a repeat offender. Mm. Uh, (laughs) It doesn't, but it really ought to. There are some players who have had no-nos, like multiple no-nos, and they would fall under repeat offender, but that doesn't necessarily mean they are a known dick. And this guy is hes just... I'm not calling him a dick. I'm just saying his on-ice conduct is full of dickatry. Mm. And he often goes at other players in a dickish way. The Florida Panthers, for example, like Matthew Kachuk, that's not a dick. It's a bit of a nutcase, to be honest. But he's not a dick. He's just kind of, um, what's the word? Violent. Extremely aggressive and violent. Whereas uh, Bennington just uh, will go at you in ways that's me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Me. Like... He didn't. He doesn't even have the decency to just straight up punch you in the face. It's more like a me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then he'll punch you in the face. Yep. He's the guy that that uh, punches you when the teacher's not looking, yeah. and then and then says, "I didn't do it." Afterwards. Give me some dignity when you punch me in the face. Yeah. <laughs> Treat me like an equal. Listen, I don't know. Uh, since you're new here, I don't know if you've noticed hockey's f- 
so stupid. Yeah. A lot of it's a there. lot of fun, but it's really stupid. Yeah. But a lot of fun. No, it's good. It's good. Hey, uh, should we wrap it up there? I want to end on one note. Okay. This one is from Shadow Panther. They need your thoughts. What are your thoughts on former Marley, Justin Brazo? Do you remember him? <laughs> Thank you for bringing this up. <laughs> Thank you for bringing this up. Uh, Steve knows where this is going. Yeah. Thank you for bringing this up. Justin Brazo, former Marley. Mm-hmm. Kyle Dubas once said in 2018. I'm going to hate this. If movie. this guy doesn't play a game for the Toronto Maple Leafs, then we've failed. Justin Brazo scored his first goal in the NHL. For who? With the Boston Bruins. Ah! <laughs> this dude is six foot five. Oh, yeah. Like 225 pounds, head the size of a fire hydrant. And the, he scored 60 goals his final year in junior. He was a late bloomer. And everyone looked at this guy and said, okay, well, like, he's obviously, like, they looked at his game, they looked at his skating, and they went, well, okay, he's not that great. Mm -hmm. That's why we didn't draft him. Mm -hmm. That's why he hasn't been offered a contract. But that 60-goal season, everyone went, Mm -hmm. well, he's huge and scored 60 goals. Sure. So if we can mold that into something, what a killer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And teams I think were offering them NHL deals. Well, doesn't doesn't don't the hockey gods float us one from the heavens and Justin Brazo takes an AHL contract. With the Toronto Marlies. Unbelievable. And they start them with the Newfoundland Growlers and the ECHL, as they should. And he does well there, as he should. And then his development with the Marlies just sort of uh, fizzles and goes into nothing. And you're like, where is this guy? Whatever happened to him? Well, that monster fucking thing that all that it it seems to... People don't like that we bring it up so much, but it really did fuck everything up. It fucked everything up. COVID. It screwed up the development of so many people. The growlers weren't even playing hockey games. And his development got kind of derailed. So where's his soft landing spot? Where does he end up? The main Mariners. The son of a gun main Mariners. Yeah. And then the son of a gun Providence Bruins. And, and he um, does so well there yeah. that he earns an NHL contract with the son of a gun Boston Bruins. And he scores in his first son of a gun game. Who would have thought that if you just kept taking cracks at this eight foot monster who can score 60 goals, that eventually he might be a decent NHLer? Who would have thought that the project. <laughs> Would take some time. <laughs> How did they lose him? By being idiots. I, I, I assume they just let him go. If if you want a little background on Brazo, if you do just a Google on him and Scott Wheeler in 2019, he wrote a fantastic article with his agent who has a bunch of quotes in there. I think the agent's name is John Walters. Um, and that's where that Dubis quote comes from, where Ugh. Dubis is so adamant about this kid has it. It's a great little piece in The Athletic if you want to go read it there. Man, Dubis was really good at finding guys like that. Yeah. He really was. Well, and like, Bobby McMahon. Bobby McMahon, right? So, like, you know, we can't pout too much. But this kid is, well, he's not a kid, is he? He's 26, just turned 26. He's, he's six foot five. I was wrong. He's six five, 245. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be great going up against Florida on the fourth line? This is legitimately ah! one of the biggest active hockey players in the world. Like, he's... Probably a top ten heaviest guy in the league. Mm-hmm. We got to wrap. I don't give a shit. I'm go. I'm trauma dumping. Okay, his final year with the Marlies, 2021. Yeah, where he probably should have still been with the Growlers, but they were fucking playing games. He had four goals and one assist for five points in 21 games. <laughs> Goes to Providence the next year and is immediately fine. Dude, he had six penalty minutes. He's the size of the abominable snowman. Mm -hmm. He had six penalty minutes, 15 goals, 16 assists for 31 points in 51 games. Goes to the ECHL, or he was in the ECHL earlier that season. Fucked it up. 
because he didn't belong down there. He's gotten better and better since, and here he is in the NHL, and I'm so pissed. I'm really happy for him. It's a lovely story. <laughs> I'm happy for him because it's a lovely story. But, but of course, of course, of course, of course. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. Connection complete.